Hello folks, and it's time for part two of our series circuit analysis. So what we're going to do here is look at a couple of uh, different series circuit arrangements on Tina TI. So I've already built this little circuit. We've got a 20 volt source, three resistors in a series loop, 4K, a 5K, and a 1K. All right, so if we were going to ana uh, analyze this, we would take these three resistors as they're in series and simply add the values together. That would get us a total of 10K. And then the current would be 20 volts divided by 10K, which should give us two milliamps. Now, based on that two milliamps, we can do an Ohm's law on each of these resistors. Two milliamps times 4K should give us eight volts across this. Two mils times 5K should give us 10 volts there. And then finally across our three, the 1K, that'll give us two volts. So we'll have two, 10, and eight, and that should add up to 20, right? Kirchhoff's voltage laws. Voltage rises must equal sum of voltage drops, all right? Now we know these resistors are in series because there's no other branch for current to come in or out. In other words, all the current that's going through R1 has to go through R2. So those two things must be in series. All the current that's coming through R2 must be going through R3. Those two things must be in series. And the same thing is through with R3 coming through the uh, source here, right? And of course the source feeding R1. You know, if we had a, a, a resistor up here somewhere that was connected, you know, back to ground or whatever, then that would be a, a join, a node where other currents could come in and that would indicate that we don't have a series network. So we have an all series loop here. Current everywhere must be the same. Sum of voltage rises must equal sum of voltage drops. So let's see what we get. We'll come up to the analyses and uh, we'll just grab a table of DC results. Pull this over here. Let's see what we get. Okay, so looking at the um, 4K, there's the 8 volts that we expected. And notice the current's 2 milliamps. And before we go any, any further, notice the current through R2 and R3 as well as the source. Um, these are all 2 milliamps. Okay, so. 20 volts at the source, then we've got the 10 volts we calculated for R2, and then finally the 2 volts we calculated uh, for R3. Now, we also have three measurement nodes, right, A, B, and C. So C to ground, VC, is the same as R3. Right? This guy is the same as R3. So there's the 2 volts. And then VB from B to ground should be the drop across R2, plus the drop across R3. So there's your 2, uh, there's your 5, uh, 5K times 2 mils. So that was 10 volts, and 2 is 12. Beautiful. The other way you could do this is go this way. Remember, the current's flowing left to right, so that's plus to minus through R1. And R1, as we noted, is 8 volts. So if we're going this way, right, plus to minus, minus to plus, A is above B by 8 volts, so B is below A by 8 volts, two different ways of looking at the same thing, and then, of course, A is above ground by 20, so you could go that way. In other words, you get a negative 8 and then a positive 20 to get to ground, so either way, it's 12 volts, all right? Beautiful. Current's the same. Everybody adds up. Happy, happy, joy, joy. All right, now, Let's change this up just a little bit. All right, so I've added a few components here. Notice I have a second power source, second voltage source. This is 8 volts. And I've added a second resistor. Interestingly enough, this is sitting below this power supply. So this negative point is no longer at ground. As a matter of fact, let's add in a little measurement point here. What do you think we're going to get here? Again, we can just add up all the resistors. There's no other branch for current. So we got four, five, nine, one, that's 10. We've got a total of 12K this time. 
what do we have for voltage? Well, the 20 volt source wants to produce a current that's clockwise. The uh, second source, the 8 volt, wants to do something that's counterclockwise. So the 20 and the 8 fight each other. That should give us a net of 12 volts going clockwise. Well, I've got 12K and 12 volts. That should give us 1 milliamp everywhere, which would mean the mills and the Ks are going to cancel. So whatever the resistive value is, that's what the voltage is. That should be 4 volts across R1, 5 on R2, uh, 1 volt on R3, and 2 volts on R4. Now let's think about some other kinds of voltages, like what is VCD, right? What's D, C to D, or what's, you know, A to C, and so forth. What's A, you know? Last time... This thing was going right to ground, but now there's a resistor in the way. So how do we figure that out? Interesting question. Well, again, if you just remember the pluses and minuses, because I know the current's going to go like this, I know it's going to be plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. In fact, E2 looks like a drop right now. So let's see what we get. And we'll do the uh, table of values again. Okay, well, there's a milliamp, okay, 1,000 microamps is a milliamp. Um, I'm not sure why they would have put one as a milliamp and one as a 1,000 microamps, but it's the same current, so there's really no, no difference there. Um, as I said, we should be getting the same uh, Voltage is resistance. In other words, the Ks and the millis cancel. So 4K times 1 mil is 4 volts. And sure enough, there's the 4 volts. R2 is 5 volts. Um, R3, 1,000 millivolts is a volt. And then, of course, 2 volts across R4. All right. So far, so good. So what is VCD? Well, we could just take VC and subtract VD. What is VA? Well, that's above by 20 volts but there's a drop on this resistor right remember that current's coming up like this so that's plus to minus d is actually below ground and notice there it is right there negative two volts might be hard to see on the video but it is in fact negative two volts for vd so va should be 18 volts right because it's this end is two volts below ground but this end is 20 volts above it so 20 volts above negative 2 is, in fact, 18. And there it is, 18. All right. So our VC value, we said, was uh, 9 volts. Right. We have 1 volt across this, plus to minus, and then 8 volts across here, plus to minus. So this point is 8 volts above ground. This point is a volt above this point. So C must be 9 volts above ground. And then D, we've already figured, is minus 2. So VCD, if I put the red lead of my meter here and the black lead over here, right, we're going to be going from a VC of 9 to a VD of minus 2. So that's 9 minus a minus 2. That's 11 volts. Okay, so we're going to put a little voltmeter in here. And let's see what we get. Well, there's our 11 volts, as expected. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Let's do something a little bit different here. What if you had a current source? Okay, so I've inserted a current source, got rid of my voltage source, put a current source in here. Uh, let's see what we get. This is a 10 milliamp current source. What do you think is going to happen? Okay, well, again, it's a series loop, so the current everywhere is the same. We don't have to figure out our total. We happen to know what the current is. The current source sets it. It's 10 milliamps. Notice the direction. This is forcing current in a counterclockwise fashion. So the 
polarity on the voltage is going to be plus to minus ground up, plus to minus right left, plus to minus uh, right left. So 10 mils times 1K is going to give us a 10 volt drop. And in fact, there's 10 volts. Okay. Um, it's negative because of the relative polarity. Now R2, 10 mils times 5K should give us 50 volts. And in fact, there it is. And 10 mils times 4K should give us 40 volts. There it is. And as I said, because it's going plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, we should be getting all negative voltages. Right? So this is coming up plus to minus. So this end is negative with respect to ground by 10 mils times 1K by 10 volts. So VC should be negative 10 volts. And there it is. Then when we go to B, right, again, plus to minus, we drop 10 mils times 5K, in other words, 50 volts. So we were sitting here at minus 10. We drop down another 50, and there we are at minus 60. Finally, 10 mils times the 4K is 40, but again, plus to minus. So we drop another 40 volts to get to VA, all right? And there it is, minus 100. So, you know, analyzing with current sources is a little easier because you know the current. You don't have to figure out what the uh, effective resistance is. You know what the current is. It passes through everything, right? Because the current in a series circuit is a constant. So you can just use Ohm's law to find the various voltage drops. But KVL still has to work, right? So if this is 100 volts from here to here, there must be 100 volts across this current source, right? Plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. In other words, minus to plus on this current source. Okay? Okie dokie. That takes care of quite a bit. Next time.